I think most of us can agree that the WWE product sucks right now. And it sucks in a bad, bad, very hard way. And it most certainly doesn't look like it's going to get better anytime soon. We're desperate for it to stop sucking so bad. As we actually just look at it and say, how can you make it this bad? How can it suck this possibly bad? Just when we thought a couple of years ago it couldn't get much worse, the WWE has found a way to outdo themselves. And what scares us is that they'll show enough skill to be able to outdo themselves in the future and make it suck even harder and even worse. We look ahead to WrestleMania 32, and we really don't want that show to suck because it's going to really be hard to justify continuing to invest any more time or effort into WWE or wrestling in large part as a whole if the biggest show of the year sucks Donkey Dick. And in a lot of ways, that show looks like it's going to be an underwhelming, disappointing piece of Donkey Dick. And we're going to sit there and say, why in the bluest of blue fucks will we continue to support this crap? So when I think of WWE fans in particular, but wrestling fans in general as a whole, there's a big sense of desperation right now. That's the vibe that I get. That's the sense that I get. Is you're desperate for a reason to continue to watch. You're desperate for this crap to actually entertain you. You're desperate for this crap to not suck so freaking bad. So you're thinking about it. You're dreaming about it. You're fantasizing about it. Ways that the WWE could be better. And leave it to somebody like the Lexman. God love him. He stands with his guys through and through to come out and do a video talking about how Daniel Bryan could save the WWE, but more importantly, save the WWE for himself. And while I admire Alex's passion, and I appreciate the fact that he stands by his men, the simple fact of the matter is, it's time to come off the fanboy bullshit. I don't give a damn if you've got American Dragon tramp stamps tattooed right above your butt crack and you're waiting for Daniel Bryan to feed you his goat seed of justice. The simple fact of the matter is, is this guy ain't coming back to save any damn thing. And he most certainly isn't going to come back and save the mother humping WWE, and that's a fact. I mean, let's be honest here. Daniel Bryan's never been that big of a star. I think this is an internet fanboy dream world that people still continue to live in this delusional bubble that Daniel Bryan was some type of big deal mainstream crossover star. He wasn't. If anything, the yes chant was over yes, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the performer himself was actually over. It's a similar phenomenon to when somebody's ring music hits and people pop for it. They pop for the music. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's the pop that matters. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're popping for the individual. They might just be popping for the music itself. Well, when it comes to Daniel Bryan, I've never understood why people think he's such a great deal and such a huge freaking star. He's average in so many capacities. Let's be honest. He, his mic skills are average. His look is average, just hit gambling. So while some of you will sit there and say that is a part of his appeal, and to be fair, maybe that's true, you also got to look at it, though, and you say, frankly, that in the past couple of years, and you could blame us on injuries or anything else, but the simple reality is that his matches were largely freaking average. Sure, he would have those occasional really good matches, but he had a lot of average ones, and in a lot of ways, they were just emblematic of the problems of today's professional wrestling business. We just go out there and spot fest the fuck out of something for 15 minutes and try to sell everybody on the concept that that was a good match that actually bothered to tell a fucking story. That's what Daniel Bryan had become. He had become a fucking spot monkey like he had been for so many years on the independent scene. He was a spot monkey. Similar to a damn Cena. Do a spot to get to a spot to get to a spot and let's hope the people are stupid enough to buy into this shit. There was no larger-than-life personality. There was no incredible charisma that, to me that connected them to the audience. You had one story that people were able to buy into this kind of rehashing in a new fashion way of a Vincent Austin story that was nowhere near as good as a Vincent Austin story. Again, if anything, is emblematic of the problems of today's professional wrestling business that this company sat there and built an entire fucking WrestleMania around Daniel Bryan. And furthermore, when we talk about the whole thing of Daniel Bryan can save the WWE, did we ever think about the fact that maybe part of the reason that the WWE is in the bad, horrible shape that it's in is because of Daniel Bryan? Look at This company built WrestleMania 30 around this guy. They spent months building up a story to get to a point where you were supposed to get this great, tremendous payoff. He beats Triple H. 
He goes breakfast club killer mode, and he smashes through everything. Like, John Cena couldn't even have stopped him that night in the freaking Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. He could not be stopped. He could not be denied. Justice will be served. Daniel Bryan would be, once and for all, proven to be the best motherfucker wrestler in the world. And everybody would go, yes, 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 and then touch themselves and go, <laughs> Who needs a woman? Daniel Bryan just won the world championship at WrestleMania, damn it. But look at it. Within a short amount of time after WrestleMania 30, he's gone. Freaking injured. So this guy that you've built your biggest show of the year around, which means in part that he should be a large focus of your product for the rest of that year. That's traditionally what you do with the WrestleMania. If you decide to make a guy a champion at that event, that means you're going in that direction for that year. What did you know very soon after? He's got a neck injury, bam, on the shelf until about Royal Rumble time. So Royal Rumble time comes around and everybody all wants him to win the fucking Royal Rumble because now Daniel Bryan is as much a breakfast club as anything else because we can't ever have him lose ever. Nobody wants that! Nobody! So then we decide to throw him into fucking WrestleMania 31. We put him into that IC title match and we have him fucking win. So two straight years where this company could have actually invested into somebody else. Two straight years where you had two spots, two moments that could have been given to somebody else where the company would actually get a return on investment. Instead, they went to Daniel fucking Bryan. And what has that gotten the company now? When you start to really see the fruits of a WrestleMania, in my opinion, can be six months a year, if not two years down the road in terms of what it did and what it set up. Well, you look back at WrestleMania 30, it was almost two years ago. What the hell's happened? Daniel Bryan, in large part, hasn't fucking been there. And even when he has been there, it most certainly hasn't been all that fucking good. So you think this guy could come in now and help save this fucking product? Well, newsflash for you. If Daniel Bryan does return, all that's going to happen is the return is going to piss you off. Period. Because you're going to want a whole lot fucking more for him than is frankly merited, warranted, or deserved. You are not going to be able to escape your fanboy dipshit shit and be able to realize that no wrestling company in their right mind on a large scale would sit there and put any type of real emphasis into a Daniel Bryan because six months, months from now, there's no certainty that he's going to be around anymore ever again. So if he came back at Royal Rumble time or came back in the Royal Rumble, you'd get all fucking butt hurt if Daniel Bryan didn't win. All the while, knowing damn good and well, if you actually put on your businessman's hat for even two fucking seconds, you would sit there and say, there's no way in hell I'm having this guy win it because two years ago I built WrestleMania around him. That was a fucking disaster. Last year when we didn't give him the title shot at WrestleMania, that almost ended up being a complete and total unmitigated disaster. That's part of the reason why they even had to go with Seth Rollins cash it didn't fucking begin with because I thought people were going to throw an fit and have a fucking mutiny if Reigns won the belt to close out the show. All the while, what the hell difference does it make? Because instead of having this big dramatic mutiny, people just slowly stop and fucking leaving anyways once Seth Rollins bored us to death as a fucking champion. If you don't have all that shit with Daniel Bryan in the 2015 Royal Rumble, maybe we wouldn't have had Seth Rollins' boring-ass title reign. That's not to say that Roman Reigns' title reign wouldn't have been fucking boring too, because most certainly it definitely would have. But I'm just saying, you really think that him coming back is going to do anything other than piss you off because they're probably going to job him out to a lot of people. So you're going to get angry about that because you want people to lose except Daniel Bryan. He has to win every fucking time. You're going to want him to have a whole lot more than is really warranted, merited, or deserved. And then when you don't get it, we get to the next point. It's just going to create another WWE and fan base conflict. The WWE is going to want to do things a certain way. You're going to resent them. You're going to rebel against them. And ultimately, nothing's going to get accomplished and nobody gets fucking over. You're going to want it done your way. You're going to want to sit there and impose your will upon the WWE. The WWE, as a consequence, is going to rebel. They're going to dig their heels in. And absolutely nothing is going to get accomplished nobody's going to get fucking over. And wouldn't you know, in recent years, with all this WWE fan conflict, nobody's fucking right. Nobody truly gets fucking over. Nobody becomes a big fucking star. And for all the other reasons we can talk about, in terms of the lack of character development, the piss-poor storytelling, the ridiculously dumb booking decisions, 
and all the other things, the stagnant production of the show, you name it, it's all there. At the end of the day, one of the big problems is this WWE versus fan base conflict. Both sides think they're right, they're completely fucking wrong, and ultimately becomes one big Johnson pissing contest, and nobody fucking wins. Everybody loses. And yet everybody's too fucking stupid to see this. Both the fan base and shame on the WWE especially. And Daniel Bryan would just fucking gum up the works. Daniel Bryan coming back would screw everything fucking up. It would create another WWE fan conflict. And this is the last thing that either side needs, that either party needs to get involved with. But furthermore above that, who the fuck is Daniel Bryan to come in and save this shit? Nobody could save this shit. Steve Austin ain't walking through that door. The Rock ain't walking through that door. Hulk Hogan's not walking through that door. Andre the Giant, the Ultimate Warrior, Randy Savage, Dusty Rhodes. We know they sure as hell aren't walking through that door. And even if they did, they couldn't save this shit today. So what in the hell makes you think, for your own purposes or for the company's purposes, that of all people, Daniel fucking Bryan can save this crap? CM Punk can save this crap, and you think Daniel Bryan could? Holy hell. It's time to let it go. The WWE's moved on from Daniel Bryan. Frankly, I think in some ways, Bryan Danielson himself has moved on from Daniel Bryan. Might I suggest that after all this time, that the WWE fan base moves on from Daniel Bryan. It might make things just a little bit better for you to get out of that fantasy world. Because escaping reality is not accomplishing anything here. He's not coming back and saving any damn thing. Because the company's not going to be behind him. And we know how that goes when the company isn't behind him. Regardless of how over they may or may not be with the audience. If the WWE doesn't want to back you, they don't want to back you. And that's it, period. You're done. Put a fork in you. You're done. You're cooked. And then the fan base is going to get ridiculously, try to get ridiculously faux behind this guy. Like they really, truly give a shit. And then they're going to get mad once Daniel Bryan doesn't win every fucking thing and isn't a part of every major storyline and he doesn't always get the better hand and he doesn't win the fucking world title. So then the WWE is going to try and push their people. Fans aren't going to like it. The fans are going to want Daniel Bryan pushed. The WWE is not going to like it. It's not going to save anything. Actually, at this point in time, frankly, sometimes I would be of the opinion that anybody with any type of accomplishment or any type of name coming back to the WWE at this point would be a help. I most certainly don't think that at this point, and I most certainly don't think that applies in the case of Daniel Bryan. I actually think the worst thing that could happen anytime soon is for Daniel Bryan to return to the WWE because fans would have all these delusions of grandeur and how things were so much better when they fucking weren't. And then the WWE would try to piss off the people and try to do things their own way and think that's going to work. But of course, it fucking doesn't. Ultimately, nothing gets accomplished. Nobody gets over. The ratings continue to tank. And the product still sucks. Daniel Bryan returning isn't going to help shit. And he's not going to save the WWE. Sorry, Deluxe Man. It's the fucking truth. If you want a circle jerk to Daniel Bryan, some of you and the other WWE fanboys... Go watch WrestleMania 30 highlights and just pretend that was the last day of the company because how could anything ever top that? Because Daniel Bryan is the best fucking wrestler in the world!